so how do I define um, self-compassion then? I really don't see a difference between compassion for self and others. I define them exact, the exact same way. I argue that self-compassion has the components of a sense of kindness, kindness, care, uh, understanding for yourself versus judgment, a sense of common humanity versus feeling isolated and cut off from others. Um, and then a sense of mindfulness, right? being aware of the suffering that's occurring versus over-identification, which, again, I'll just clarify this in one moment. Let's go through each one separately. Okay, so self-kindness versus self-judgment. Kindness is more than just um, hearts and flowers, okay? Kindness has a very active um, component to it. It means when you're kind to yourself, you really want to comfort yourself when you're suffering. You want to alleviate your suffering. You want to soothe yourself, okay? It's a, it's a very active um, stance where I want to do whatever I can to help myself feel as good as possible in this moment, okay? Common humanity, um, really framing one's own experience in light of the common human experience. It's very funny, if I were to ask any of you, you know, are you a human being? Are you a human being? Yes, of course. Is everyone else a human being? Yes, of course. Does everyone else suffer? Yes, of course. You would say that logically, but in the moment when you just blew it at work, or you had someone reject you, or something really bad happens in your life, what happens non-rationally is that we get very egocentric. We feel like, why me? This is somehow has happened to me. I'm the only one who's messed up. I'm the only one who's going through that difficult time. And we feel really cut off from others. It's as if somehow when things go wrong, that's abnormal. You know, this is not supposed to be this way. Something has gone wrong. But you know, is that the case? Has anything gone wrong? Is anything abnormal? No. <laughs> You know, that's what life is. Life goes wrong. No one in here signed a contract before you got, you know, born in this world saying, I would be perfect, my life would be perfect. And yet it's like, this is not the plan I signed up for. I'm pissed off about it, right? That's how we, that's how we react. Um, the problem with that, and there's a lot of problems with that, but one of the main things is when we feel isolated and cut off from others, you know, physiologically, that's very frightening. If you think evolutionary, what, evolutionarily, one of the worst things that can happen to us is to be isolated from the group, because then we aren't safe. Um, and it's interesting, this aspect of well-being, I don't think has been studied enough. The sense of can we feel connected to others in our suffering, or do we feel isolated from others in our suffering? And just, I can tell you, in the workshops I've conducted, especially the eight-week ones, at the end, I ask people what they got out of this the most, Almost every single person says common humanity. I realize it's not just me. It's not just me who judges myself. It's not just me who suffers like this. Very important to remember that this is the human experience. This is how things are supposed to be. Okay, there's nothing has gone wrong. Yes, it's painful, but it's normal, it's natural. And then this is where the mindfulness comes in. Um, you have to be aware of your suffering in order to give it compassion. So um, mindfulness allows you not only to notice your suffering, but very important, we'll talk about this more, to be with your suffering as it is. We don't like to be around suffering. If we could just get rid of pain, you know, we'd do it. Um, and we have lots of psychological mechanisms to avoid that, again, which I'll be talking about in a little bit. So self-compassion says, wow, pain is occurring. Can I turn toward that? Can I be with that? And you actually need to do that to be able to give yourself the caring and support you need. All right. Now, some people do say, come on, you have to notice your suffering. Isn't it like blindingly obvious I'm suffering? But it's often really not. Um, the pain caused by self-judgment, I think in some ways that's some of the worst pain all of us experience. You know, a constant, niggly, niggly pain. I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not this enough, I blew it, I'm this, I'm that. But often we are so lost in the role of self-critic that we don't really stop to realize, oh my God, this is really, really hurting. You know? And in some ways it feels more comfortable to be the self-critic because at least the self-critic isn't the person that messed up. <laughs> you know, the self-critic knows you messed up. The, the part of you that feels really you know, vulnerable and secure and a failure. Um, often we don't give that sort of side of the um, process as much attention, okay? And then also very um, important when things go wrong in our lives, very often we go straight into problem-solving mode. 
It's like, there's a problem. I don't want there to be a problem. I need to fix the problem, you know, immediately. Um, and what happens is we go straight into problem-solving mode and don't stop to, again, turn towards the suffering and say, whew, this is really hard, this is difficult, I need a little, I need a little care and compassion to get me through this, then we, aren't, we really aren't at our best and our most psychologically stable when we go um, towards trying to fix that problem. Okay, so it's actually something you have to remind yourself to do before going straight into fixing problems. To just acknowledge and validate how difficult the situation is. <laughs>